We're going to do another example of a partial differential equation boundary value problem in cylindrical coordinates. Um, and once again, we'll be seeing the Bessel equation and the modified Bessel equation. Um, here is the Bessel equation. Here's the modified Bessel equation. And we're only going to run into a part or zero. So these ends will be zero. So you're just going to see this upfront part and then either plus or minus alpha squared x squared. Okay. It's minus, it's the modified Bessel equation. And here's their associated general solutions. And these graphs are what they look like. The important parts of these graphs is where do they blow up? Because that will come into play when we apply boundedness as an implicit boundary condition. So let's do another example. Well, we already did that with the vibrating membrane. And uh, we that's how we could reject the negative or the non-positive eigenvalues in that case. Let's do another example. Temperature in a cylinder, a heated cylinder, and it's the steady state temperature. The temperature U is the temperature as time goes to zero for this situation. I mean, as time goes to infinity for this situation. Um, it's also, we assume radial symmetry. And take my word for it, this is the governing partial differential equation in cylindrical coordinate. Um, actually, theta doesn't even come into play here because we assume radial symmetry. Anyway, the temperature is held at zero at the bottom and around the sides, and it's some constant temperature U sub zero up at the top. Well, let's separate variables like usual using the product method. We'll say U is a function of big R, or is the product of big R and big Z, where they are functions only of those individual variables, little r and little z. Well, this term is going to be, let's see, r double prime z. This will be r prime z. And this will be z, r, excuse me, r z double prime. That's this numerator up here. So then to separate variables, we'll divide everything through by big R, big Z. And here we've separated variables. All R stuff on one side, all Z stuff on the other. I could set it equal to either minus lambda or plus lambda. Uh, and here's kind of a subtlety. Sometimes you got to kind of look ahead. Um, which equation? Let's go ahead and do those two equations. So if I do set it to negative lambda, I'll get this for the R equation. I could multiply through by R squared and I'll get this. And if you recognize this, when lambda is either positive or negative, it will be either a, either a Bessel equation or a modified Bessel equation. So the R equation is some kind of Bessel equation. Here's the Z equation for minus lambda here. <clears throat> And I said I could set that, the, the sign of this lambda either way, either positive or negative. It's going to depend on what, what boundary conditions allow me to complete the eigenvalue problem. Um, this might take a little foresight. In this case, we're going to be able to find them from the R equation. And you'll see how that works. If you tried it on the Z equation first, you would be stumped because you couldn't completely, what you'd really want is two zero conditions at the two ends of Z. You can't quite find eigenvalues with just the Z equation itself. So I use minus lambda here because I'm gonna look at the R equation first. So let's see, let's look at those boundary conditions. This equation, this condition. In the separated variables, it means this. 
And that means since it must hold for all Z, the R at R little r equals two must be zero. Uh, let's see, this equation, it's zero condition. This says Z at zero at little z equals zero must equal zero. So those are our two zero kind of boundary conditions. So let's look at the non-positive lambdas first. Here's the equation in R. So if it's negative, I set it equal to minus alpha. Here I get the modified Bessel equation of order zero as this general solution. Okay. We're again gonna require boundedness as an implicit boundary condition. And I won't go back to the graph, but the center of this cylinder is included. That's where R equals zero. And this modified Bessel function of the second kind blows up at R equals zero, it becomes unbounded as the argument goes to zero. So we set this coefficient B here to zero and the surviving function is this guy. But let's see, at R equals two, the function equals this and the boundary condition says it's zero. Well, I sub zero is never zero. So we have to set a to zero again, which gives us a trivial solution and we reject negative lambdas. Okay, what about when lambda equals zero? Then I just have this part, I can divide by R and I get this equation, which from our cheat sheet, our formula sheet has this general solution. Again, it must be bounded at R equals zero. So I'm gonna set B to zero. Gives me with just R equals a constant. And R at the argument of two just equals that constant, but that has to equal zero. So again, we get a trivial solution, so we reject that. So we reject all the non-positive lambdas. So let's look at the positive lambda case. Then we'll get the normal Bessel. It has this general solution corresponding um, corresponding Z solutions will be these, ocean cinch. Look, boundedness, again, it's got to be bounded at R equals zero or as R goes to zero. So we have this, and this guy doesn't do that. So we set B to zero. This is our surviving R function. And at the argument of two, it equals this. That has to equal zero. And that gives us our eigenvalue generating relationship. It is this. Eigenvalue generating relationship. Um, this is going to be a case one when we use the Fourier Bessel series to expand the function. Um, let's see. Now let's look at the Z equation. At the argument of zero, this was the general solution. At the argument of zero, it's just A, and the boundary condition says it's zero there. So the surviving Z function is this, some constant times the singe. Put the two solutions together, the R solution and the Z solution, you get this. Add them up over all solutions to get the general solution, you get this. You don't have the big A sub n's yet. Um, I'm gonna have to do this in two pieces. Um, so now we have to apply that very last boundary condition, which was the temperature at the top of the cylinder. That was where Z equals four. So here's, here's the situation. At Z equals four, here's our solution. It has to equal this constant. So we have to expand this constant using some kind of series, right? This says use a Fourier Bessel series. And because of our eigenvalue generating relationship, um, we use the case one way to do that. 
which gives us these C subets. And here they are. So we're matching coefficients again. This is big A sub n singe must equal the little C sub n's from the Fourier best series. Um, so that's matching coefficients. So here's our way of computing the A sub n's. Normally we would stop here. But in this case, we can actually evaluate this integral. And because I'm already running through about 10 minutes, I think I'll do that in a separate report.